through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 270. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of July 30th. Mm -hmm. Ending this month on a good note. Yeah. Some pretty strong releases coming well, up. Kind of. Technically, Wednesday ends the month. It's as close as you get with DVD releases. <laughs> Semantics. Yes, exactly. Don't make me punch uh, you. Uh, get it on film. But you, you punching someone with a shirt logo I'll for say your own. I'll say it's yes. digital. <laughs> it's all CGI. Yes, yes. It's, yes. it's visual effects. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, in terms of releases, as I said, it's a pretty solid week. You know, I think pretty much all of the ones we're going to talk about, I'm pretty, at least in some capacity, curious to check out one yeah, kind of a less than others. Week, I would say. That's a bit of a hodgepodge, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. All no, no huge release. Uh, well, a huge release. But, but not not the, not the most noteworthy. No huge sure. wanted releases. Let's just yes, say that. Yes. <laughs> Let's start, though, with one of the smaller ones, mm -hmm. and perhaps one of the ones I'm most excited yeah, about, actually, which me is too. Justice League. The Flashpoint Paradox, mm -hmm. the latest animation to be released from Warner Brothers, yep. based on, you know, obviously, the Justice League yep. and the DC, you know, Comics. DC Comics. Um, this one focused around The Flash, mm -hmm. this time actually voiced by, was it uh, Justin Chambers? That's right, yes. From Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Which is a bit of a disappointment. I've been a fan of uh, Neil Patrick Harris, who's yeah. been doing The Flash for a while. But they still got a lot of the other normal yep. people. Like Most Kevin Conroy. Boom. Nathan Fillion mm -hmm. is the Green Lantern. Yep. Gotta love that. Uh, Carrie Elwes is Aquaman. Yep. I forget the name of the lady who does Wonder Woman, which makes me feel like a jerk, but I, I think A whole it's, bunch of them. And yeah. then you've got, like, Ron Perlman as Deathstroke. Uh-huh. So yeah. for those of you who are not familiar with comics, this might be falling on deaf ears. But nevertheless, it's about an alternate timeline for the superhero flash creating ripples that disastrously alter the universe and flash must team with other heroes to restore the timeline yeah kind of interesting because yeah the, the the series is based on by i think jeff john yes thank you mm -hmm. uh the architect of dc comics right now really yeah interesting. He's, he's the ones who are behind all that of makes them. sense because i mean this series flashpoint kind of was the the lead-in to the whole reboot for the DC Universe, the new 52. Because yeah. it's about alternate timelines, and when the Flash fixes it at the end, semi-spoiler, while it fixes things, it also creates an alternate future. Hmm. And so they rebooted all of the DC series and had 52 new projects that started, all of which, all of the existing uh, titles that they had were canceled. And 52 new series yeah, debuted in September of 2011 with first issue, including action comics and detective yeah, comics, Batman, which have been going since stuff, yeah. forever. So, Which kind of caused a bit of an uproar. Yeah, but kind of a, I mean, a bold move, considering that the Marvel Ultimates was incredibly popular yeah. and successful, so... But uh, the film is directed by Jay Olivia, mm -hmm. who did Batman The Dark Knight Returns, mm -hmm. uh, animated film, if you guys saw that. That's the one with Peter Weir? Or, or, uh, not Peter Weir, that's Peter Weller. Peter Weller, yeah. Peter I Weir's think from you're right. Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, there's some interesting stuff. Not a heck of a lot on the DVD in terms of special features, but the stuff that's there is interesting. There's a, a Flash in Time, which is sort of a discussion of, are there other dimensions? Can time travel get us there? If hmm. Flash existed, could he re really travel through time? <laughs> and they actually interview experts in mythology, theoretical <laughs> physics, and top DC writers to examine the science and sort of legacy of the story. I like the mentality behind that. If Superman existed, how would politics change? Like, yeah. it's, like <laughs> it's kind of an interesting theory. I liked it when they did it for Fringe, so why not do it That's here? true. Yeah. Uh, there's also one about uh, featured about the villains of DC. You know, uh, particularly the Flash's bad guys. Yeah. With Jeff Johns and others sharing their favorite Flash villains in a short little clip thing. Hmm. And then there's also a few bonus cartoon episodes from the DC Comics Vault. And of course, the lead-in to whatever the next animated yes. movie is. And there's actually an audio commentary as well, so nice. that, that is nicely done. I actually too. think there's even a teaser after the credits are at the end of the film that directly leads into the next one, too. Rather than just being like, it's separate, and then here's a preview for another one. I think it actually has like a little tease. Well, it's also appropriate that you know they're starting to build up the Flash since they've talked about... Uh, loosely a 2016 release date for a Flash yeah. live action movie. Yeah, but, and you know, considering the New 52 is what's like the current DC line, it's if you want to redo Justice League and get people in, involved in that, important. you should get the new lines out yeah. there in the movie. So, And uh, also on note, this comes on Blu-ray, DVD, and Ultraviolet all together, nice. so you're covering a lot of those bases right there. 
moving right along, we're going to jump back in time before I was born. Yeah. Back to 1980 and talk about The Fog. John Carpenter. John Carpenter. We've got a special edition, or sorry, collector's edition mm-hmm. coming from Scream Factory, which is Ooh, the nice. horror um, subsidiary of Shout, Shout Factory. Yeah. Um, this is the we're talking as we mentioned John Carpenter, mm-hmm. it's our Adrian Barbeau, uh, Jamie Lee Who's, Curtis, I think his wife at the time or girlfriend, girlfriend at the yeah. time, which is especially awkward since uh, producer Deborah Hill was his ex who had been oh. dumped shortly before that. So, Weird. Yeah, uh, but you also have Jamie Lee Curtis and mm-hmm. Janet Leigh, daughter and uh, mother, yes, going together. You yes, know, Psycho and Halloween mm-hmm. together. Some horror. Um, classics there yes. and other people like tom atkins and this was john carpenter's first feature at after halloween yep so yeah, even and, it, and i don't think it was which also i didn't curtis it wasn't a hu- as huge of a success but it got good reviews and was commercially considered a success and of it, course they remade it in yeah, 2005 so. it thomas jane i believe or something like that uh is that the, no i think that's the mist isn't oh it? you might be right the yeah. stephen king one yeah, yeah i think yeah. this one has a bunch of uh but again yeah. you know it's about uh was it a small seaside village where was it mariners come yes. through an eerie fog to Mm -hmm. wreak vengeance upon the town Mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome i like the idea and it's um building on prior releases as they've done in the past with some of these screen factory ones it's got some stuff from the mgm release that had been done before which are uh there's inside the fog featurette there's fear on film featurette there's an audio commentary with john carpenter and deborah hill (laughs) which is good since i think deborah hill died in like 2007 or something like that Hmm. so not gonna get that again yeah but how awkward it was to have him uh directing his well they did a whole bunch of (laughs) stuff together after that so i guess maybe they were able to figure out a way yeah, their professional relationship lasted longer than their personal yes. ones. Uh, but in addition to those things, uh, Scream Factory added a new HD transfer supervised by the director of photography on the film, Dean Ooh. Cundy. Uh, an exclusive interview with Jamie Lee Curtis discussing the fog in her legendary early 80s Scream Queen career. Mm-hmm. An audio commentary with Adrian Barbeau, Tom Atkins, and production designer Tommy Lee Wallace. And then a retrospective interview with um, Dean Cundy about his legendary collaborations with John Carpenter. So good stuff like there. That's quite a loaded disc. Even beyond that, there's also the option of getting a uh, special version with a uh, Fog Collector's poster. Oh. Which is the new artwork that they've done and stuff like that, which is just, pretty cool. Just, just a print of fog. No yeah, words. Exactly. That'd no be, detail. That'd be, just that'd be sort clouds. of sad, yeah, if they actually had nothing on there. It's just gray. <laughs> like, it's the fog. What do you want? Go? Some texture. A yeah. little bit. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I believe it only comes on either Blu ray or DVD. You can't get all of it together. But pretty awesome release, yeah. I got to say. You know, So I'm looking forward to checking that out. So mm-hmm. good on them for that. Yeah. Like, got like John Carpenter. Factor. Yeah. Him too. He's pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Moving right along to perhaps the biggest name release of the week. And I'm still even kind of a little curious to check out, even though I haven't seen it yet. Same here. And that is G.I. Joe Retaliation. Mm -hmm. This is the um, follow-up to the G.I. Joe live-action film from a few years back. That was Star Chaining Tatum. The Rise of Cobra. Yes. Uh, This time we've got John Chu as Mm -hmm. the director, who did, I feel like, a couple of the Step Up movies. I think you're right. Yep. Um, Two or three, I think, maybe. With, I forget. With maybe Tates. even four. With yeah. the Tates. Yes. Well, two had Tates a little bit, not That's so right. much. He was that's post Tates. But <laughs> coincidentally, he had a little bit of Tates here as well. Uh-huh. Um obviously they re essentially rebooted the franchise. Yes. So they didn't exactly reboot it, because Chain Tatum still existed. Mm-hmm. But essentially everyone else in the movie was new. I mean, you had Bruce Willis as the original Joe. Mm-hmm. You had uh let's see, uh Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you had as Roadblock. Yeah. As Roadblock, you had um a few other people, Adrian Padalecki, uh Ray Stevenson. For the most part, almost all the characters from the last movie have been removed from yeah. this one. In fact, only five members of the cast appeared in both. In, in both, and that's uh, Byung Hun Lee playing Snake Eyes or Storm Shadow. Yeah, which is awesome. He's uh, a very good. Re- Ray Park playing Snake Eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arnold Voslo, who is um, from the Mummy. He's also he's oh, Z- yeah, Z- yeah, yeah. Uh, Zartan. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then Jonathan Price playing the president, and uh, Channing Tatum playing, I think he's Falcon? I forget, yes. or is he Hawk? I don't remember which one he is. I forget. Yeah. Probably Falcon. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a pretty loaded release that they've got going. They've well, got good. Blu-ray, 3D, Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet. Boom. Five five uh, format. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And there's a fair amount of uh, special features. There's an audio commentary with John Chu and producer Lorenzo de Bonaventure, who's done a ton of stuff. So, mm. apparently, it's a pretty um, 
uh, entertaining track that you know they cover a lot of the real world plausibilities and sets and shooting. What if they talk stuff. about the post production 3D and redoing? I'd Channing be curious. Tatum's I part. doubt it though. Um, but there is some interesting stuff in terms of that. They've got a whole bunch of featurettes under the GI Joe Declassified name. For instance, there is. Um, one about deployment, which has an ex-Navy SEAL uh, talking about preparing the actors to dis do military skills like professionals huh. look accurate. Um, there's a, Not a bad idea. discussion about, uh, let's see, The Lone Soldier is a closer look at the human emotions of the film, casting Bruce Willis in a brief history of the action figures. Hmm. There is uh, a discussion about building the dojo set from scratch and training the martial artists for the fight sequences. Very cool. Um, there is, let's see, uh, filming uh, in a 40-acre sand pit near New Orleans and uh, killing off a main character. Huh. Not going to say who that is, but yeah. I feel like most people can probably infer who that is. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. So, I mean, they've got a decent amount of special features going on. So, not, not too bad. Not too shabby, considering yeah. the movie is probably not that great. Not that great. It's got to be better than the last one, though. Oh, I hope. That one was terrible. Oh. But at the same token, you know, I'm still a little bit curious to check it out. Yeah, I mean, this one didn't have powered robot rocket suits yes. flying through the air in slow motion. Oh, gosh. But at the same time, like to sort of downplay the whole Cobra Commander aspect of it and stuff, I'm I'm not entirely sure how well I feel about that. Granted, they kind of wrecked him in the previous movie mm -hmm. with Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah, strangely enough. Yeah, but um, I'm still curious to check it out. Yeah, so. Just, I I grew up on unfortunately. G.I. Joe. Oh, me too. Most yeah. Hasbro products. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that's probably why I hate Michael Bay's Transformers so much because it's. Uh, I don't. It's like, you know, defecating maybe, on my childhood. Eh, maybe maybe Directly. that's why I'm so desperate for the Transformers. <laughs> I don't know. Because you one. love it when people defecate on your childhood. Yes, I do. <laughs> That brings us to our last uh, discussion for this week, and mm -hmm. that is um, the Criterion <laughs> release of The Devil's Backbone. Yes. Uh, this is the film from Guillermo del Toro in 2001. Mm -hmm. I, uh, is this a, a, just a bump? or is Nope, it this new... is not a bump. This oh. is a new release, yes. Very nice. Yes, very nice. Um, it's uh, set during the Spanish Civil War mm -hmm. at a, was it a... Uh, not a youth home. Um, orphanage? Orphanage. Yes. Um, where, you know... Uh, a kid arrives and discovers the school is haunted and has many dark secrets that he yes. has to uncover. And um, it very much is sort of like in the same vein as Mama, mm -hmm. which I, we've discussed before. Yes. In the sense, you know, he didn't direct that, Guillermo del Toro didn't direct Mama, but it's sort of about the resolution more than being scary. Like yeah. it's unnerving, but it's about sort of the. Un, um, the resolution of these ghosts that have Definitely. unresolved issues and mm -hmm. trying to help them get rather than it is just being straight up scared wall to wall horror yeah or, yeah which I, I mean is interesting when it's done well yeah when it's not done well it can be a bit of a bummer and Guillermo del Toro generally does well He's with kind of good. more mm -hmm. creepy than he does necessarily scary I think it's interesting that not only did this movie take 16 years was this movie in development for 16 years which mm -hmm. is I mean Guillermo del Toro was just trying to get this made sure, forever. Yeah. But uh, also that Guillermo del Toro considers it a sibling film to Pan's Labyrinth. Interesting. And he describes this being the masculine brother film, and Pan's is the feminine sister. I could film. see that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, they're both a... Spanish Civil War. Yeah. So <laughs> one's a main dude. Yeah. One's a girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes a little yeah. Little bit of sense. Fantastic yeah. and ghosts. Yeah, supernatural stuff. Yeah. yeah. But you know. As you would expect, Criterion has loaded it up with special features. There's a new oh, yeah. 2K video vi uh, film transfer mm -hmm. supervised by, by Guillermo del Toro and the director of photography, Guillermo Navarro. Hmm. Um, there is an audio commentary from del Toro. There's a video introduction from del Toro from Dang. 2010. There's new and archival interviews with del Toro about the creation of the film. Um, there is a doc 2004 making of documentary, Que es un fantasma. Huh. Well, wow. breaking out some Spanish for that. Not name. joking around, is nope. he, Gilmore? And there is a new interview with uh, scholar Sebastian Faber about the film's depiction of the Spanish Civil War, Interesting. which is cool. And there's also um, a program comparing Del Toro's thumbnail sketches and Carlos Jimenez's storyboards with the final film. 
So oh, that's pretty neat. cool to see how it transitioned yeah. from idea, concept, to execution. Guillermo del Toro was very visual with that oh, stuff. Oh, totally, yeah. He's like, beautiful. Like I, I saw something for Pacific Rim. He like was hands-on directing all the animation after it had already oh, yeah. been storyboarded. I believe it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's very... I mean, his style is very iconic. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, you don't get an iconic look like that without get, being hands-on or just having yeah. one dude do it all yeah, that you trust yeah. a lot. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's Guillermo del Toro. It's Criterion. It's hard to complain about mm-hmm. this. I will be adding this to my collection yep. very shortly here after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that brings us to a wrap for this week. Let mm-hmm. us know which ones you're picking up this week and which ones you're avoiding. Maybe you're on the fence about G.I. <laughs> Joe retaliation. Yes. I'd be curious to hear what other people Most people are. Probably avoiding guessing. it. Yes. Like, but <laughs> nevertheless, let us know your feedback at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in. Mm-hmm. We're at Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Uh, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Miro. Yes. We're on Blip.tv. We're on Roku. You can check in and get glue, get some stickers, badges, sticky badges, I'll give some that. stars on iTunes and some thumbs on YouTube. Leave us some comments while you're there as well. We like talking with you. We do. Hearing some comments back and forth. And mm-hmm. uh, we'll see you next time. Fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop